Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at something a little bit different. We're going to look at the energy in special relativity of a small particle. Of course, when we say special relativity, we mean the particles moving close to the speed of light. And we can write the energy in terms of the total energy being equal to the kinetic energy plus the rest mass energy. Now the kinetic energy is equal to the difference of the relativistic energy, mc squared, minus the rest mass energy. The difference is the kinetic energy, and we add to that the rest mass energy, which means the rest mass energy cancels, and we're left with the total energy equals mc squared, where m is the relativistic mass, which can be written as the rest mass times 1 over 1, the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now we can also write the momentum in terms of the mass times velocity, since this is the relativistic momentum, this is the relativistic mass, which means it's the rest mass divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Next, what we're going to do, we take e total is equal to this quantity right here. We take m sub dot c squared and move it over below the e total. So we have e total divided by m sub dot c squared, and then we square that quantity, which means we're left on the right side with 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, but since we're squaring the left side, we square the right side, and we end up with that. Now we're doing the same with this equation right here. We're going to square both sides, so this becomes p squared is equal to m sub naught squared v squared divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now we move the, now we move the m sub naught squared to the denominator over here, like we did here, and then we also divide the left side by c squared, and we divide the right side by c squared. So we have 1 over c squared on the left side and 1 over c squared on the right side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this quantity here and subtract from that this quantity right there. And let's see what we end up with. So when we do that, this is equal to that. So on the right side, we end up with 1 divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared and subtract from that this quantity right here which is equal to this. And so we end up with v squared over c squared divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now when we see that this is over the same common denominator, well, didn't quite write it properly, so maybe I'll write it like this. So now you can clearly see it's a common denominator, so we can write over the same common denominator. So this is equal to 1 minus v squared over c squared divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared, which is equal to 1. So that means that this here is equal to 1. So what we can do now is we can move this to the other side and see what we get. So we have e total squared divided by m sub naught c squared quantity squared. This is the rest mass of the particle, and that's going to be equal to 1 on the right side of the equation, minus this quantity when we move it up, so that becomes plus, on the other side, p squared divided by m sub naught c squared. And I guess I need my parentheses still. Now I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by m sub naught c squared quantity squared and see what we get. So now we have e total squared is equal to this times this, gives us m sub naught c squared quantity squared plus now when we move this in the numerator, notice we have an m sub naught squared and an m sub naught squared that cancels out. We have a c squared squared as c to the fourth power, so that would be, that would be p squared c to the fourth power divided by c squared in the denominator. The m's cancel out. The m sub naught squared in the numerator and the m sub naught squared in the denominator cancel out. In other words, we can now write that the total energy of a particle quantity squared is equal to the rest mass energy squared, m sub naught c squared quantity squared, plus, and when the c's cancel out, we have momentum squared times c squared. And this is now the equation of a particle that has mass m at rest would be m sub naught, so a particle with mass, when it moves at relativistic speeds, the total energy is going to be equal to the rest mass energy plus p squared c squared. Hmm, this kind of looks like Pythagorean theorem. And if we want to graph that out, we will end up with something that looks like this. If we put on the hypotenuse 
the total energy. So the total energy can be represented by the hypotenuse of this triangle. Then on one of the sides, we have the rest mass energy, m sub naught c squared. And on the other side, we have the square root of this, which is p times c. So you can see that the total energy of a particle can be represented as Pythagorean theorem, where it's going to be equal to the square root of the sum of the two squares of the sides, where one of the sides represents the rest mass energy and the other side represents the momentum times the speed of light. Now this is always going to be constant, and the momentum, of course, can be defined as the mass times velocity. So what we could say is we could say, well, this can be replaced by m times v times c, and you can see that the total energy of the particle will continue to increase as v increases, and yes, as v increases, the mass will proportionally also increase, and so therefore this side will become longer, this side will stay constant, and the total energy will become the hypotenuse of an ever-growing size triangle as the momentum increases, which means as the mass increases and as the velocity increases of the particle. And so we can see that, again, through manipulation of these equations, we can come up with equations describing the energy of a particle at relativistic speed. Now, what if we have a particle that doesn't have mass? Well, then this term will go to zero, and then the total energy is equal to this. For example, for a photon that doesn't have mass, we could then say that the total energy of the particle is simply equal to the momentum of the particle times c. And that would be for a particle with no mass. And that's how that's done.